Another big topic that is on the radar at the moment and which I've seen you, Businesses Hey, have uh, had a, a direct interest in is the reform of industrial relations. And I heard the CEO of the Business Council on the radio this morning, uh, Westercock, uh, discussing this. Um, well, maybe you can tell us, what is the Business SA position on the government's proposed reform? Uh, there's, look, there's a, a bill that uh, went through the lower house in Canberra, so it's a federal bill, and it's called Secure Jobs, Better Pay. And the business community, rightfully, is really concerned about the impact, potential impact of this bill and the way it's been rushed through Parliament. This is a very complex bill, many hundreds of pages, yet it's been pushed through with two or three weeks consultation because the government wants to get it passed before Christmas. It's the biggest change to industrial reform in decades and they're giving two or three weeks consultation. So more reflection is, is needed. Well, small, small business should be very concerned mm -hmm. and we've, we've struggled to get the media's attention until the last few days and I think that's because the bill is so complex. But I can give an example for your listeners that for us is strikes at the heart of why the bill is so dangerous for, for small businesses. Okay, so what, what is particularly well, interesting for small businesses? The, the legislation gives the unions very broad rights to create multi-employer agreements based on what they call the businesses having the same single interest. And the definition of single interest is so broad that businesses who have no reason to be roped into this bargaining and agreement will find themselves caught up in it. And I'll give you an example in a moment. Okay, so it's probably a definition of what's in market. So, so here's an example. You could have um, uh, Westfield Shopping Centre mm -hmm. and you could have a butcher, you could have a hairdresser and you could have a newsagent. Now, those businesses, the only thing they have in common is they're all in the same Westfield. Yet under this scenario, they would all be put under the same multi-employer agreement okay, based on yeah. their location and they have nothing in common other than the fact they operate out of a Westfield. And they've, they've kept the definition of a business, small business, at 15 employees. Mm -hmm. And that's not 15 full-time equivalent, that's just 15 heads. So if you imagine you could be a little cafe, okay. mum and dad are running it, but they've got 20 casuals that work over the course of the week, they are considered to be a business that would fall under that agreement. Not being a small business. Correct. They would be considered to be eligible. So any business okay. that's ineligible is 15, is 14 employees and fewer. Hmm. So this could impact small businesses who have no interest to be part of this business. Uh, bargaining arrangement, yet they could find additional costs. They could find that not just their wages are going up, but they could be forced into industrial action that they have no intention of being involved with because they're part of a particular group that's taking action. Um, the bill talks about increasing wages and productivity, but there's no indication it will do that. Yes, that's the crux of it. That's the you know the, the starting point. I guess the fundamental driver of this is how to improve um, wage and salary outcomes, which have been stagnant for such a long time. What what can we do on that field? Well, Stuff. there has been the the recent numbers have shown that we are getting growth in the September quarter. In fact, it's been the highest growth in about ten years, mm -hmm. and we, we have seen growth over, over that period, not necessarily at the, at the rate everyone would like. And I think the biggest uh, concern really is for a lot of those lower paid sectors, aged care is a good example uh, of, of one. Um, and many of these are actually under government awards. So it's, it's, a, it's a federal government issue in terms of getting their wages up. Um, so I don't think business has any issue with, with seeing those, those sectors get a better deal. But... Um, 
trying to put this blanket approach in across all small business, in fact, all business, um, is most likely to lead to increased um, inflation and therefore pressure on interest rates will continue. Because the reality is if inflation is running at 8%, Antonio, you're not going to get an increase in wages that will, will keep at that rate. Otherwise, you'll see inflation skyrocket. So we know that in high periods of high inflation, there is always going to be um, an issue around getting real, real wages growth. And hopefully we can get inflation down so that at a point in time, we start to cross over and, and uh, inflation sitting at 3 or 4% and, and you're getting wage increase at a similar amount. And then you do get that real wage growth. Cool. Okay. Well, um, it's a big topic. And I know um, David Pocock, Senator Pocock, is um, paying a lot of attention. He's trying to do a lot of work. Um, and you're right. So that there is a lot. Time is short. Um, you've seen lots of submissions of uh, people wanting to talk about this topic. So we shall see. So maybe Christmas is a bit ambitious, um, but it's, it's a big topic. And I think if, uh, we always say productivity is the basis for increased living standards and wage increases. Productivity has been stagnant for decades now, a couple of decades. Um, it's it's not, not easy. And so... Um, yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's that's a, our next topic. How, how do we how do we maybe. Move on productivity? Well, there's two things I think. How how do you lift productivity, but also how do you measure it effectively? Yeah, and I right. think as as we've become much more a services based rather than a manufacturing state, it becomes so difficult to quantify um, just how productivity is is uh, is increasing or otherwise. Yeah. yeah. You know, okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Andrew, for uh, coming on to Radio Italia Unida Live virtually. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. Bye.